I don't know if another decision would have been better. But it yeah. was like if you, you only had bad decisions at the time. Apparently there were only bad decisions, but there were very well-established preparedness plans and pandemic response measures. For Rebel News, I'm Tamara Ugolini, bringing you another report out of the World Health Summit 2022 that takes place every year in Berlin, Germany. We were there on the scene to bring you this year's conference, which happened for the first time ever in partnership with the World Health Organization. From what we saw, the summit was an opportunity for health professionals and bureaucrats alike to rub shoulders with the elites, these unelected elites, pushing the global health agenda forward. The strategic partners of the conference itself leans heavily toward the pharmaceutical industry and oligarchs and corporate consultants who have a special interest in manufacturing global health outcomes. We were on the scene for the full three days to get an insider's glimpse into this conference that is riddled with non-state actors like unelected and unaccountable Bill Gates and run with influence from the controversial McKinsey consulting firm. We wanted to see what was being discussed with people on the ground in the health sector and what they thought of the COVID-19 response. Of course, the conference kicked off with heavy mask compliance, but as the day turned into night and drinks started flowing, the level of masking was minuscule at best. In the clip that I'm about to share with you, it gives the insider's perspective of a German ICU doctor whose perspective I have broken down into a few different clips, which you can view at rebelwho.com. In this particular video, he shares his view that the public health and government bureaucracy, COVID response plans like mask mandates and lockdowns were a terrible idea. We kick off the conversation with indiscriminate masking. Check it out. When I was working in ICU, sometimes I was feeling like I, I was feeling dizzy and brown. And then I pulled off my mask and I started <laughs> breathing again. And actually, yeah, yeah, yeah. it helped. Yeah, yeah. Well, well you, were, you were fine after. What? When you took it off, you were fine. Uh, yeah, 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 kind of fine. Yeah. I don't know, I can't. It gives I think me. Like, like, I actually think I, I say medicine too, so it's an educated guess. But I don't think it's that healthy if you do it every day. Right, yeah. for a long time. <laughs> to exactly. Be, to be, to be too. So yeah. you wear it for because you want it or because it's manageable? Um, well, for two reasons. Okay. One reason is because it's like a tremendous amount of people. Yeah. And it's autumn. So I actually find it pretty, pretty convenient okay. to have a mask, especially like if you... Yeah, if you Everyone is together. Yeah. So because it helps for like every disease of the way. Mm -hmm. And for COVID. And I wear it because sometimes it makes other people more comfortable. Oh, okay. If I talk to someone and they're more comfortable with me wearing a mask. Did you hear that? An educated, practicing ICU doctor dons a mask because it makes others feel more comfortable. Sounds super sciencey, doesn't it? So I took the side of public health as a bureaucrat and speculated that we thought that the public health response was great. And he is shocked that anyone actually believed the things like global lockdowns were a good idea. Have a look for yourself. When we didn't know we were failing, right? We didn't know then that it was failing. We thought it was great. What? The lockdowns like, and the nah, mandates. Nah, nah. And did, did, you actually, like, did you actually, in this moment, because every, like, every person has his own reality, like, did, you actually think it was a good thing to do? But at the beginning, we didn't know. Did you really? Like, really? At the and beginning, then, it's and, just like, something... Without with judging. Yeah? Yes, like, we did. Yeah. Yes, you did. Yeah, but, but I think you it's, didn't? Like, it's part of, it's part of, I think it's part of your career to actually say, yes, we, in this moment, we you thought it was a great decision. We thought it was the one thing which... Would, yeah, yeah. I, I, I thought it was awful for me. Did you, who did you tell? Did you tell anyone? Yeah, I was not. working on, on ICU, so, so I was like, I was busy. Yeah, it was it busy? Because then we saw that it yeah. wasn't busy. Later, yeah. right? Later you start to see these things. You don't know in the moment. It's, it, it's a tremendous cognit cognitive dissonance. Uh, yeah. But it actually, it was full and it was a bad decision to have to lock down. Mm. I, don't, I don't think... Like, I don't know if another decision would have been better. 
but it yeah. was like if you, you only had bad decisions at the time. Apparently there were only bad decisions, but there were very well established preparedness plans and pandemic response measures like what could be found in the Canadian Pandemic Influenza Preparedness Planning Guidance document from 2018 that were entirely disregarded and replaced with these unscientific knee-jerk reactions in what was the greatest transfer of wealth of our time while the charlatans wine and dine. For Rebel News, I'm Tamara Ugolini. You can catch all of our previous reports at rebelwho.com. Of course, the trip was lengthy and costly. So if you would like to chip in to help offset the cost of this travel to bring you the otherwise unreported side of this story, you can do so at rebelwho.com.